You are watching Tech Confessions. Created by Amy Lewis and brought to you by VMware. Yeah. Thank you. I'm really <laughs> glad to be here. If you pick the best time to come, like in the DeLorean. Absolutely. Well, it can be any time we want, it, though. That's a fair I've point. I've picked the best time to be in the DeLorean. The, actually, now that yeah. you point that out, it's very intentional yes. on your this part. This is an it? amazing car to be in, <laughs> by the it way. It really is. So we're here to find out when you kind of had that moment of your, your what we like to call the software-defined moment, when mm. you really started thinking about software and its importance in technology. Um, versus hardware. I feel like we all start with hardware, but when did you have your oh, software? Oh, wow. Moment? So, I have a story. People have sometimes heard this story before because I've told this story, but I'll tell it again. So, Steve Wozniak was an advisor to my last startup. Oh my Piston. gosh. Well, that's a great and, way to start any story. Right? <laughs> it's because he's uh, his best friends with Alex Fielding. Alex worked for me, and I was like, I'm really looking for an outside board member. <laughs> Alex like, well, I can ask Woz. <laughs> so, um, sure. <laughs> and so I had a conversation with Waz on the phone at one point when he was in Bucharest and I was in San Francisco and it was late at night for me and early in the morning for him or something. It was a little weird. And we were talking about the way that software has evolved. And I was saying, you know, I've only ever done software. I never really did hardware. Um, and he's like, yeah, well, software really started with the Apple. Because before the Apple, you had to understand the hardware in order to write software. That's a really great and the point. Apple was the first computer. So I, also, I often credit Woz with having invented software engineering. He's not Turing, he didn't invent programming, but he was the first one to make it accessible without understanding hardware. So I started with an Apple when I was six years old in, uh, in 83. And I never really was a hardware guy until I got pushed into it. And it was because Software got complicated enough that it had to go on more than one computer. And all of a sudden I had to understand networking and I had to understand storage and whether it was local or remote and all of these annoying things happened. And I had to go understand distributed systems, which I didn't want to do <laughs> because I just wanted to write software, but the software had to be really big. You know, I was working on the, the Netscape browser and that was the first one where I was like, oh, um, we're going to collect stats tracking from millions of users it won't all fit on one server. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh dear. <laughs> and then that problem just got worse and worse. You know, and I ran a website that was on Oprah at one point. I was like, oh, 65 servers for that. And then some NASA projects, you know, where we had like petabytes of data for Google Mars and Google Moon and the Microsoft Worldwide Telescope. And it was like crazy number of servers. Um, so I've been trying to get back to just being a programmer for a long time. <laughs> Once you go down that distributed systems thing, you know too much. Like, There's no, we'll have to yeah, send this back. Set, send this back. Set this back. <laughs> we can go back to like 84. <laughs> that was the best time. We can we can send ourselves forward any time here. We've got it programmed now to 2055. Okay. Can you give us some predictions? Where do you think we're going? If not that oh, far out, where wow. do you think we're going? Yeah. So I'm a member of the Canadian Cloud Council, right, which does sort of technology and ethics and policy. And we have a big conference coming up um, in May. And so I, I did an interview with the head of the Cloud Council, Robert Hart, to talk about some of these big technology and ethics questions, mm -hmm. right? And so, Now that is also just, that's the first time we've had an answer like that, which I think is interesting and a fair point, right? Like, as we evolve the ethics thing. So please continue, oh. but that, I love that that's an angle we're, we're talking about. Absolutely. Here. I mean, all of our future is dominated by how do we solve the ethical questions attached to technology. So I keynoted the Interzone Conference in Vancouver a year or two ago, which was a Canadian Cloud Council event, and I talked about Magna Carta V2, which mm -hmm. is kind of like, what do we think about the ethics responsibilities of the people writing the software? Mm -hmm. um, and the reason is just speed, right? Our government, all governments really, have been designed to change slowly. Mm -hmm. That keeps them from thrashing the entire society back and forth during regime change. But they now can't keep up with the pace of change in technology and so they've just lost their ability to regulate technology in a meaningful way. By the time they're like, hey, we're finally having a net neutrality debate. Uh, after, what, two thirds of the entire planet has internet connectivity? So we're a little late <laughs> to have a conversation <laughs> so about- We need this machine to, <laughs> right? like, to correct some things here. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, and on a sober note, um, yesterday was the first uh, time an autonomous car killed someone. Wow. So these 
these ethical questions, uh, and it, it killed them because they it didn't recognize them as a person. Oh wow! Right, and so we've had all of these questions about algorithms recognizing or not recognizing people's humanity based on gender and based on race and based on disability. Mm -hmm. And now it turns out it was just someone pushing a bicycle. Oh my gosh, yeah. And especially so, here we are in, in the Netherlands, this is uh, an incredible thing to think about. Absolutely. Right? So when I think about 2055, I'm really thinking about how do we push technology back into the balance team mm -hmm. in the sense of we've kind of left too much of society behind and we've left technology in the hands of software engineers. Um, you know, I was, I was a programmer when I was six, so I know the culture and the mindset that went along with writing software in the 80s and 90s. Um, and what it took to be dedicated to that as a craft really, I think, gave a lot of people a myopic view of the world. And so we need to broaden that conversation, broaden those teams to include enough people to make real moral decisions. And I think that's so interesting and uh, somewhat like there's a great book called How Doctors Think and they talk about, you know, way back when doctors were, were trained purely on the science without the sort of discipline of ethics or you yeah. know, liberal arts classes. And I, I think you raise such an interesting question about how we educate and engage. You know, you think about you as your six-year-old programmer self, were you ready to make these kinds of decisions? You know, was yeah. your code ready to deploy and impact lives? Like, right, absolutely. Well, I, I'm not ready for my kids yeah. code to impact my life just yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I used to believe, you know, when I was younger and I was I idealist and an environmentalist, I thought we should just slow everything down. Mm. We should force the precautionary principle. Um, and my thinking is entirely flipped now. I actually think we can't slow down. The mm -hmm. cat is out of the bag. We have to accelerate our pursuit of education and ethics to catch up to where technology is already going. Um, and I mean, if you think about what's already possible today with technology, the lines are so blurry. It's a William Gibson thing, right? Like the future's already here. Yeah. It's not only not evenly distributed, it's not being evenly applied. That is lots to think about an excellent confession and i think Thank much you. like you're uh, programming we're gonna have to like distribute it because i'm we're gonna have to come back absolutely you know, we'll, we'll program a time so you. this is actually the second coolest car i've ever been in okay what's the first coolest um the the tesla that went into space oh you no way yeah <laughs> i'll tell you that story maybe another time i'm gonna have but to program for our, your next episode there you go we're gonna have to there have you go this absolutely my daughter my daughter's like your dna is in outer space dad i was like well now my dna is also in the delorean which means it's in other times you're pretty much winning <laughs> yeah, i'm winning amy thank you so much thank you josh really fun <laughs> if you're ready to make your tech confession join us on techconfessionstheshow.com